My Canon EOS R is my main workhorse for most of my video and photo work for the last few years now. It's followed me from video shoots to short trips. Today, I thought I'd share my settings for the Canon EOS R so that you can take some inspiration too. Hey 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 everyone, my name is Ruben Liu and I'm a photographer, video producer and digital creative based in Malaysia. I'm a creative lead in an advertising agency and run a production house at the same time. My aim with this channel is to equip budding creatives to kickstart their journey and carve a space in this industry. If that resonates with you, do consider subscribing. So the Canon EOS R has been out in the market for some time now. To me, it's still a great camera to use for hybrid professionals, even with the launch of the R5 and R6. Let's start with my photography settings for the Canon EOS R. The Canon EOS R lets you save three custom modes so that you don't have to toggle between them so often. I have each set up for different situations. Custom 1 is set for basic event coverage jobs, Custom 2 is set up for more serious jobs, and Custom 3 is set up for casual photography. All three of my custom settings are manual in nature, but I have little differences between them that I'll share now. Custom 1 event coverage. Let's start with Custom 1. Since we're talking about event coverage jobs, I usually don't shoot in full raw because you shouldn't need to edit too much. So I shoot in compressed raw. The R's white balance is usually quite spot on, so I have it set to auto white balance with white priority on. Since we're shooting in RAW, the picture style isn't that important, but I have it on standard mode, which is my custom 2 picture profile, just in case the client wants to see a preview. My preferred autofocus method for quick event photography is to use expand AF area around. This is because face tracking for events on the R can be a little sluggish. I'm shooting in high speed continuous drive mode so that I can spam if any action is happening. Other than that, aperture, ISO and shutter speed is adjusted according to the situation. Don't forget to save your custom mode by going to the menu settings tab and registering the custom shooting mode depending on which of the three you want to save it to. Custom 2 Studio Photography My custom 2 mode is meant for studio or more controlled environments. I'm shooting in full RAW for, with my picture style, also set to standard view for client preview. Since I have more time in this situation, face tracking autofocus is selected with eye detection with a single shooting drive mode. Don't forget to save the custom settings accordingly. Custom 3 Casual Photography This mode is usually when, I use, when I'm using my R for casual travel or random things. I'm shooting JPEG here with the white balance set to daylight. My picture style is set to my custom style which allows me the best output to apply my own presets in edit. Neutral with sharpness strength at 0, fineness and threshold at 2, contrast at negative 4, with saturation and color tone at negative 2. I'm having face tracking autofocus turned on with the touch shutter enabled and drive mode at high speed continuous. The best thing about having these three custom modes is that you can switch between them depending on the situation without worrying about the settings once you have them set. The other photography settings I have can be changed in the menu settings. I've enabled the touch and drag AF settings which can be found in the first menu under the AF settings with the active touch area set at the right of the screen. The eco mode is switched off because I have my own settings and methods to preserve the battery. You can switch it off in the second tab under the settings menu. In the power saving options, my display and auto power off is set at 1 minute with the viewfinder set off at 3 minutes. Beeps are annoying and therefore switched off in the fourth tab. I don't quite like the auto switching between the viewfinder and the screen, so I've turned that to manual which you can do so by going to the fourth tab under the settings menu and selecting display settings and changing display control to manual. But you may be asking why did you enable the touch and drag AF if you aren't going to use the viewfinder? I have a method to switch between the viewfinder and screen with one press of the button, but I'll get to that soon. To transfer photos between your camera to phone quickly, make sure you connect your phone to the camera in the fifth tab. If you need a tutorial for this, let me know in the comments. Now we're going to customize some buttons to make navigating around the Canon EOS R easier. First, go to the Customize button section in the fourth tab under the Operation menu. I've assigned the Multi-Function button to pull up the Dial Function settings, which lets me change the ISO quickly. The AE lock button pulls up the Wi-Fi function for quicker photo transfer. And the AF point button is switched to set AF point to center, which is helpful when in a run and gun situation. Now back to manually switching between the viewfinder and the screen. I programmed the right D-pad button for that purpose so that I don't have to accidentally activate the viewfinder. I've also programmed the down D-pad to switch the display off, which helps to save battery. Going back out to customize dials, these are my preferred settings for my dials. The dial on top of the shutter button toggles shutter speed, while the dial near the mode changes the aperture. Even though I set the controlling to exposure composition, I rarely use it. Unfortunately, we don't have a third dial for ISO. That's why we programmed the M function button earlier to quickly pull that up. Now, about the controversial multi-function touch bar. 
I don't have it set up to do anything in shooting mode, but in media playback mode, I have it set up to quickly rate photos, which is very important if you have a lot of photos to sort through. The rate feature is probably the most underrated feature on cameras. Finally, we're going to check out the My Menu tab and see what I've added to this quick access tab. You can add things at the second tab and essentially what I have are IS mode, silent shutter, time-lapse movie, Canon log settings and HDMI resolution. Most of these things don't really make sense in terms of photography mode, but they are essential in my video and live stream work. Now we are at the video settings. A lot of the menu settings are about the same, but again, I have three main custom settings here. Custom 1 is for B-roll, custom 2 is for C-log, and custom 3 is for casual shooting, since it is also the default video profile when you press the movie button in photography mode. Custom 1 B-roll. I shoot most of my B-roll in OI Full HD at 50 frames per second to give me the flexibility to slow the footage down in the edit if the need arises. I have the digital IS enabled in case I'm doing handheld shots and the white balance is set at 47,000 Kelvin. But it will adjust depending on the situation. My picture style here is set best for my personal presets, shooting in neutral with sharpness at zero and contrast saturation and color tone at negative two. Face tracking AF is the default autofocus mode. Of course, shutter will be double of the FPS, so it's set at 1 over 100, but ISO and aperture will be adjusted depending on the look I'm going for. Custom 2 C Lock. With shooting C Lock, there's not a lot of things I can adjust. White balance is manual, and I'm shooting all I 4K at 25 frames per second. Face tracking AF is switched on, and digital IS is disabled. I rarely use this mode unless I really need to have the dynamic range and quality. Custom 3 Casual. Most of my settings for the casual mode are in the same as my B-roll mode with the exception of all I Full HD being switched to IPB Full HD because I don't need large file sizes to work with. The other settings are identical in my photography settings. There are times I actually forget the custom mode settings and I end up just dialing them in in the manual modes. I hope this in-depth look into my Canon EOS R helps you to set up your camera and help you start making great content. If this video helped you in any way, do consider hitting that like button and subscribing to this channel. I'm planning on releasing more settings videos in the coming weeks. That's all I have for today. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.